that's the hen. And the tom is down lower, 150 yards, 200 yards. Let's get up there. I saw him go running away. What's that? I just saw. I just saw those turkeys go, turkeys go running away. I really like this spot. We know there's toms in here. It's the end of May, and I've made the questionable decision to haul my camping gear down to Nebraska to run and gun late season turkeys on public land with my buddy Sam Sohol. Now you probably know Sam as the guy who converted an old school bus into a slow moving gas guzzling hunting camp. But Sam is also a dedicated conservationist and one hell of a turkey hunter, which is a real good thing because the nomadic low density birds that call these sand hills home well, they've been hunted hard for weeks already. We need to find a few more turkey tracks in the sand yeah. than yesterday. Yeah. But hopefully they'll be, you know, they should be fresh after that giant rainstorm. So if we do find turkey sign, we'll get into them. Let's go shoot a couple birds, huh? Sounds good. All right, buddy, good luck. There's so much road hunting on this property because it's public. And, it, and these birds are, they start out really visible in this sand hill terrain. I keep thinking by now they're not gonna gobble much. You know, the season's been open for a month and a half. And then I gotta get in here deep. I'm kind of looking at it like an over the counter elk unit almost where you're like, probably not gonna kill one by the road, but you never know. So I think this is gonna be sort of a grind. As I settle in for the first cold calling sequence of the hunt, Sam is off glassing an area he scouted the previous day, hoping to lay eyes on a tom, or at the very least, hear one sound off. There's a bird. All right, the first bird gobbling on the limb. Doesn't sound like it's that far away. If you find yourself having to figure out late season public land birds while hunting with a buddy, it's often a good idea to try two different hunting styles. The Western style involves covering ground until you see a long beard or get one to gobble, and then you hastily set up to try to call him in the rest of the way. The other style, which is more of an Eastern strategy, and quite frankly, is pretty boring compared to walking one down, is to find a concentration of turkeys and sit on them and carefully work them until one of the local toms has had enough and decides to strut into your spread. This is a landing pad here on this uh, water tank. Looks real nice, and I don't want to push it any farther. So I'm going to put a hen out on this road so it's visible if any bird pops over here to get it to strut. But I think I'm going to spend a little time here because this, this feels good. He's probably only 300 yards away. He can't even hear me calling. I'll grab the decoy and we'll scoot this way. Let's get up there and glass. See which way they're moving. Maybe we can call them right to this top. Yeah, that's the hen. And the tom is down lower. I saw 
some go running away. What's that? I just saw. I just saw those turkeys go, turkeys go running away. Not sure if there was a hen on the far ridge that caught us moving or coyote ran down the drainage or what happened, but uh, that play is over. <laughs> Just got tucked in here in this first spot. Just two track road coming in both ways. It keeps going to another windmill landing. But I like the visibility here. I like that it's tucked in out of the wind. I still haven't heard a bird yet, but that doesn't surprise me. Dude, that was a long day of turkey hunting. I'll tell you what though, we saw six turkeys today. For the conditions, it was a pretty solid day of turkey hunting. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't want to curse it, but I think there's more birds out here than we thought. Yeah. Well, after we had, I mean, we got into that bird first thing this morning, and then after that, nothing. So we're going to go right back in there and try to kill one of those birds that we See heard See if they this came morning. back in there to roost. Yeah. Yeah. But man, tonight, there's nothing going on for four and a half hours. And then like 15 minutes before shooting light was gonna be done, I looked out and saw a hen, I don't know, 200 yards away walk out, then another hen, then a strutter behind her. Yeah. And they were, they took off running toward my blind. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> and they stopped once, yelped, just rap, 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 quick. Yep. Like, hey, get over here, we're going. Yeah. And that Tom was strutting his way in, but like running, strutting, running, sure. strutting. And those hens took off and ran up this freaking bluff. And that Tom came out and he just cut off. Like he was like, oh, I wanna go to those decoys, but I got live ones. There's like a, there's like a, just like a fold in the bluff. And they ran right up it, and you can see they probably got up there and just pitched right on the other sure. side because it's out of the wind. Yep. And they should be like. So you just leave blind. Two hundred yards away from my blind. Sweet. I mean, they in a dream scenario they get up on top of that and they just pitch right down into right that down opening. into it. Well, tomorrow's another day. Yeah. 
I'm mm-hmm. so ready to go to sleep. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's already almost 10 o'clock, so yeah. it's just time. We already got to get up in six hours. Yeah, so it's time for food, sleep, repeat. Definitely. Do it again. No gobbles this morning again. And the weather is exactly the same as it's been since I got here. Which means the weather sucks. Aside from hunting pressure, nothing affects a hunter's chances of success quite like the weather. We obsess over it, and there's almost nothing that sucks more than hunting tight-lipped turkeys in the rain for days at a time. You find yourself compulsively looking to the sky while praying to the turkey gods to give you just a glimpse of a break in the clouds, which might let a little sunshine through. Well, the plan for this morning has not worked. We had uh, expected to hear at least one time on one of these ridges. I mean, yesterday we got in on a bird and then they bumped out. So I don't know if they shifted and are roosted somewhere further back in here or further north. But without hearing stuff to go chase, I hate to just fumble around the woods and, and bump stuff and scare stuff. So we'll figure out if we want to do a big loop and call our way back to the truck or go back to the truck and start working different road systems. There's a bunch of little spur roads we can go off on and call and try to strike something up this morning. strategy now. I think I'm going to not use a Jake decoy anymore. Use one hen or a couple hens and just go figure something out because I just don't get, I'm not getting vibes like they want to be out here in the open. I got to do something different. It's got to be up on that ridge, right? You think we should book it and go up? We've got a couple hundred acres in here on this chunk that we've, the timber that we've been looking at. We're just kind of going to work this ridge system back in there and call and listen and call and listen and just kind of work our way in a giant loop through this whole thing for the last few hours of light. But hopefully we can get something going. But if not, with any luck, we'll roost some birds tonight and have a really good starting point for the morning. And tomorrow's supposed to be the best day of the trip, so. some birds. That's a wrap on day two. Tomorrow is supposed to get really nice. I'm going to sit this again just to see if that bird comes back through here. But by about 10 o'clock I'm getting out of that blind and I'm going to go run a gun till dark because it's going to be nice. I've been out here for three mornings in a row at sunrise. I haven't heard a bird gobble off the roost yet. Yeah. I mean, we heard him gobble off the roost the first morning in like basically the drizzle and the rain, so. I'm gonna go climb into that stupid blind for a while, cause that bird's starting to give me a complex. Mm-hmm. And then I'm gonna go run and gun. Yeah. So I, I think we should keep in touch yeah. and maybe meet up like 10, 30, 11 o'clock and then go work some birds together. Yeah. Just see if we got, you know, tomorrow, it's supposed to be like 60 degrees by like 11. Yeah. And tomorrow might be the kind of day where we can work down a ridge and split up 100 yards apart and call back and forth and make something happen. Right. You know, and even if you can get, I mean, there's quite a few hens, even if you can get a hen really fired up as well, you know, maybe it'll, 
get a tom going and drag one in. I mean, that's that's kind of what I'm working on in that spot is I think those couple hens are living there and that one tom's just hanging on them. Yeah. And the hens have been callable when we've been around them. Yeah. Um, I've called hens into the decoys you know, every day, but, yeah. or into like shotgun range by the decoys. <laughs> yeah. But I think that's a good plan. As a new day dawns, Sam and I are greeted with a sight every turkey hunter loves clear skies. On paper, the birds should be gobbling like lunatics, but for reasons known only to them, they aren't saying a word. If there were birds gobbling, we'd hear them this morning, so we'll just keep driving. I'm gonna go back to camp and meet Sam and eat a sandwich. And we're gonna team up for a little while and try to try to tag team one and see if we can just get something going. When you're dealing with pressured birds, a long odds tactic that sometimes works is to tag team them. What you do is you set up 75 to 150 yards apart from your hunting buddy, and then you call back and forth to one another. The goal is to sound like two groups of birds working the same area in the hopes that a nearby tom will become interested enough to head your way or at least give you a courtesy gobble so you have something to work with. With all Hail Mary hunting strategies, you go in with high hopes, but generally come out the other side without much to show for it, but the feeling that at the very least, you tried to make something happen. It's just got that feel of midday, just <clears throat> Yeah, which is kind of interesting to me because I figured like many days of rain, I figured they'd be going hard today, but yeah. now they're probably out there laying down. Probably have their heads right on the ground. That's cool. <laughs> the gopher mound is a pillow. Yeah. They probably heard that gobble and they're like, right. Well, should we go? Uh, yeah. Let's go find some other birds. <laughs> As close as I've ever come to shooting a hand in the spring. 
Jake Van with the four feathers in the middle that were taller. And in my head, I'm like, oh, it's perfect. Backing on the decoy, and I'm looking at the chest going, no beard. And in my head, I'm like, that looks like a hen. But I had that safety off, and I'm like, just trying to make it into something it wasn't. I had so many setups where I've been like, if only they would just do exactly this, come down this lane and hit the decoys and not pay attention to me. And that bird did it just perfect. It just happened to be a hen. And she was uh, not happy about that Dave Smith decoy there in her in her spot. Such a rush, it was so fun. Yeah, that was an ass kicker. Yeah. Start to finish. Yeah. For both of us, for different reasons. Yeah. I mean, when you travel to hunt new places, and I mean, it, this is such a different thing than a lot of turkey hunts. Mm -hmm. There's no destination food. Like, yeah. you can't be like, they're going to go here at some point today. Right. I'm going to wait them out or I'm going to concentrate. It's, it's like mono habitat for 20 miles. I think the mistake we made after seeing how pressured they were because even like the hens like that hen that you had this morning mm -hmm. when they're like they're like i'm going away like you can come with me yeah but i'm i'm leaving is and then you had that jake come up is we should have just been doing what we did yesterday the whole time yeah and post post a shooter up 75 yards ahead and get back and call because they're giving you like a drive-by yeah but it's not like, like you know usually a drive-by is like 40, 50 yards? Yeah. This was like... 150. Rifle range. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yep. But this, it's just like when an elk's bugling and he's going away from you. You can't catch up. Yeah, you need a, like, a helicopter yeah. <laughs> to get in front of him. Yeah. The thing about turkey hunting is that it can be so damn easy or just a total ass kicker. Sam and I knew that we weren't going to run into a lot of callable birds on this trip, but the promise of just one in a few days was worth the effort. It's humbling eating a turkey tag when you've been lugging a 12 gauge through the sand hills in search of any legal bird. But that's part of the deal, especially when you're working pressured turkeys. The long drive home gives you plenty of time to think about the mistakes you made and the fun you had. And for reasons I can't fully explain, how you'll justify doing it all over again next spring. We'll plan another trip somewhere or another. For like maybe a fishing trip? Yeah, I think a fishing trip. <laughs> Yeah. Squirrel hunting? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Maybe a higher odds deal? Yeah, I'd be fine with that. Maybe dip our Mountain toes. Goat. Let's dip our toes <laughs> into this a little bit next time. Yeah. <laughs> All right, buddy, All let's right. go home. Sounds good.